Well, the supposed red wave turned into a crimson trickle, and though there's a slim chance the Republicans could still take the Senate, this was far from the landslide that many had predicted beforehand, but Ron DeSantis crushed it, increasing his margin of victory and celebrating it with a rip-roaring speech. We chose facts over fear. We chose education over indoctrination. We chose law and order over rioting and disorder. Florida was a refuge of sanity when the world went mad. Was this election a referendum on Trump? Trump backed candidates like Mehmet Oz, Yesley Vega, and Herschel Walker underperformed. There now seems to be a split in the 2016 MAGA crowd. Some sticking with Trump, but some saying it's now time for DeSantis. The poll I ran on Twitter is currently skewing heavily in favour of DeSantis, and it certainly doesn't help Trump that he has unfavourability ratings on a par with Hillary Clinton, someone who also kept running for and kept losing the presidency. But then again, several candidates DeSantis endorsed also lost, leading to questions about whether his popularity extends to anywhere outside the Sunshine State. John Fetterman's victory proved once again that for Democrats, the ability to string two coherent sentences together isn't really that important. We've now entered the era of the sympathy vote. Another black pill is Gen Z, which voted overwhelmingly Democrat more so than in 2020, with many of them perhaps nervous that they'll be prevented from having promiscuous sex and being able to terminate their babies like medical waste. Pretty incredible that we'll make you poorer and less safe, but we'll let you bleep your baby message seems to work for a lot of people. Don't underestimate the power of cringe viral TikTok videos, because apparently Republicans did. The problem Republicans will have with TikTok in 2024 is that it's the most censorious social media platform ever created. They wantonly ban any and all content created by conservatives that gets mass flagged by leftists. But it's not all doom and gloom for Republicans. If they take the House, which it looks like they're going to do so, they're going to stop Biden's legislative agenda. And even if they fail to regain full control of the Senate, at least Democrats won't be able to call them the do-nothing Congress in 2024, and then run a platform on demanding divided government with another Democrat president. So not getting the Senate may actually boost Republicans' chances of winning the presidency in two years' time. We also learned that two and a half years of riots, rampant crime, and abject moral degradation doesn't put off Democrats. Apparently they like all of that and they want more. Leading again to concerns that America as a single entity won't even exist in 10 to 15 years time. 73% of Americans are either angry or dissatisfied at the way things are going. And yet from the way it looks now, not a single incumbent Democrat senator or governor is gonna lose their seat. How does that work? The bad news for Biden is a CBS News exit poll showing 66% of voters don't want him to run again, but then the failure of the red wave may actually turn out to be good for Republicans because it facilitates Biden running again. The New York Times says it may take weeks to decide who wins the House. Not suspicious at all. Don't question anything though, just stay off social media and trust CNN. Stay off social media, people, if you're trying to figure out, if you're trying to figure out are there really issues with voting? Trust your local officials, trust us here, trust a news source that you know. What do you think? Is it finally time to move on from Trump? Or does DeSantis' sphere of influence begin and end in Florida? I'll be reading your comments below. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.